In the last phone show, I gave short shrift to this, the Google Pixel 4a 5G, partly because it's the odd one out. The 4a and the new Pixel 5 here are the same size. In fact, what I've been calling the perfect size for smartphones, being similar to my iPhone 11 Pro shooting this video, and other slender classics like the Samsung Galaxy S9 and S10. But I recognise that if you can manage with something just a slightly bigger, then you get more bang per buck, along with more future-proofing from the 4A sister device, the simply named 5G variant here. Now this compares in size to the larger Plus or Max phones out there from manufacturers like Samsung. This is my trusty S9 Plus and Apple, the 11 Pro Max, and is great for content and media, even if it's slightly harder to use one-handed and to keep secure on the go. Trade-offs. Having played with all the Pixels now, including last year's 4 and 4XL, and including the Pixel 5 here, this is the one to go for. It's the pick of the bunch for me, the 4A 5G. The Pixel 5 was chassed about in the last phone show with the similarly sized 4A, and compared to the 5, the 4A 5G only loses an official IP rating that is still waterproof in testing. The blink and you'll miss it, only on sometimes 90 hertz screen refresh, Qi charging, which is a shame, and it does miss the extra two gigabytes of RAM, which I doubt will make much difference here. On the plus side, the 4A 5G is £100 cheaper, has proper stereo speakers, the 5 has all output piped in mono to the bottom speaker, and anything out of the underscreen earpiece is just high frequency mono filler, really. Now, this has a 3.5mm audio jack, which you all know I love as a fallback. So pros and cons compared to the 5, but even at the same price, I'd take the 4A 5G, and here it's significantly cheaper. Which brings us to the differences for this Pixel 4A 5G to the cheaper 4A reviewed in Phone Show 406. Do you get enough for the extra £150? I think you do, provided you're happy with the larger by 1cm, heavier by 30 gram form factor in the hand and pocket. It's not unmanageable by any means. And it's actually quite a bit smaller and lighter than the Samsung Monster flagships or this uh, iPhone 11 Pro Max, indeed. From the smaller 4A, then, you get a faster chipset, the Snapdragon 765 this time, and with that 5G support, so faster and more future-proof data. You get a larger 6.2-inch diagonal display, obviously. And as with the 4A, it's not the brightest in the world. This is more or less max brightness, but it's good enough for most people. A larger battery at 3885 milliamp hours, which is always good, an easy day's worth of power, and an extra camera offering 16 megapixel wide angle shots, which is probably worth the extra £150 in UK money. Most other aspects of the Pixel 4a 5G are identical to its smaller sister device, the plastic unibody, which can be used naked if needed. But again, I'd always kind of recommend a TPU case for grip, if nothing else, since the plastics quite smooth. Unlike, by the way, the Pixel 5, which has a nice textured matte finish on the black version. The stereo speakers are the same as the 4As and aren't bad at all. Not quite class leading and there's no Dolby Atmos, but they work. They give a good stereo image and most people will be quite happy. As with the 4A, the output from the headphone jack is quite good enough, if again, not quite class leading. The main camera is as stellar as usual, but this is my first experience of a pixel generation with wide angle lenses. And it's right up with the iPhone 11 series and wide angle cameras from other manufacturers. See the examples here. Coupled with the excellent multi-exposure software zoom algorithms, the 4A 5G and the 5 are now comparable to most other 500 to 1,000 pound flagships in this department. Biometrics are via a capacitive finger scanner on the back, helpfully indented by Google. It works well, even if the arrangement isn't now well, very trendy. The usual always on display is present and correct and works superbly, as does the music recognition system popping up the artist and track name for any music playing nearby, even some of my less mainstream progressive rock sometimes. The 4A 5G, like the UK and World 4A, comes with Android 11 out of the box, bang up to date and everything's super smooth. I prefer it on the larger screen here too because I always find Google's fonts and UI elements just a bit too small on the smaller pixels. Here everything's easier to read and more comfortable to use. 
The battery lasts easily a heavy day at almost 4,000 milliamp hours here, at least on auto brightness and with my typical smartphone use. Though the large screen and stereo speakers do lead the 4A 5G into media watching mode, and then your mileage will vary with Netflix, etc. Of course, there's no Qi wireless charging, as I say, and that's the big miss for me personally. But I accept that Qi is not very efficient and ultimately not that good for the planet, so I'm not going to beat Google up here. Ditto for not including some crazy fast charging tech. You really do not need your phone charged in 30 minutes if it means lessening the life of the battery and or generating extra heat. I'm happy with a solid 18 watt 3 amp charge into this Type-C port and so should you be. As I said in Phone Show 406, you can't go far wrong buying the 4A and this also applies to the 4A 5G. In fact, if you can live with this slightly larger device, it's actually the smart choice from the 2020 pixels, I contend.